Well, good morning. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. Uh, glad to have you here today. You know, for the last week or so, we've been looking at some of the various individuals who are part of the Easter story. We've discussed the individuals such as Judas, Peter, Caiaphas, Pontius Pilate, Barabbas, and Simon of Cyrene. All of these individuals are part of the Easter story in some way. And today, as we end this look at the, the people surrounding the story, we're discussing two people that are basically anonymous. We don't know their names, and yet their involvement with the story of Jesus' crucifixion is both incredibly significant and widely known. See, in Luke chapter 23, there we're told that as Jesus was put on the cross, two others were crucified with him. We aren't told their names or their stories, just that they were both criminals. Listen to what happens, though, in Luke chapter 23. It says this. It says, One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since we are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he turned and said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, if you've been around the church for any length of time, you've heard both of these men reference. Tradition has it that these men were thieves, which is why they were there on the cross. And they're commonly referred to within the church world as the thieves on the cross. And while we don't know much of their story, this brief moment that they shared with Jesus here can show us something incredibly significant, both about Jesus and about ourselves. So first, this shows us that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That was the statement he made about his ministry, the purpose for why he was here. And even in his final moments, his mission was on display. It would have been so easy for him to check out and just focus on himself. But there, in that moment of pain, of suffering, of humiliation, of finality of his life here on earth, his mission was still active and still on display. And the truth is that this mission will forever be the mission of Christ and the mission of his church. For the last 2,000 years, we've celebrated Easter because Jesus' mission was to seek and to save the lost. And that has continued and never relented. As we celebrate in the coming weeks, we celebrate because Jesus continued his mission, even to the point of including you and I in his efforts to save the lost. Secondly, though, this event shows us something important about us as people. And that is that grace is possible when we recognize our sin and our need for a Savior. At any moment of our life, this can happen. At any moment for any person, grace is real and grace is available in Jesus, just like this man on the cross experienced that day. I love that Jesus so clearly communicated this man had received grace because there's nothing that this man could do to earn or to work for his forgiveness. He couldn't go serve in his local church. He couldn't go on a mission trip. He couldn't teach at a vacation Bible school or become a deacon. Yet, I love the fact that he couldn't because it shows us that none of that stuff is what allows us to be forgiven. Grace is only a gift. It's not a repayment or a reward for our religious efforts. So be reminded today that anyone at any stage of life is just one moment away from confessing Jesus as their Savior and receiving the most forgiveness and grace they could ever experience. And remember, as we celebrate Easter in a few weeks, remember that you celebrate the grace you received, a gift that you could never work for or deserve. I hope this has been an encouragement to you, Calvary, and I hope that you will join us this Easter, April 3rd and 4th in Lake Havasu and Parker and online, we will be worshiping. So if you're watching from Havasu uh, or if you're tuning in as part of our online audience, Saturday at 3.30 and 5 p.m., Sunday at 8, 9.30 and 11, and our Parker campus will be worshiping Sunday, April 4th at 11 a.m. We really do hope to see you there as we worship the mission and the resurrection of Jesus.